Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the recording of my live question and answer session on sewing and dressmaking that I did on the Instagram platform on Monday the 23rd of January 2023. So lots of people have sent in questions beforehand asking for advice and recommendations and tips on their sewing and dressmaking projects. So I'm going to be sharing lots of good advice that will hopefully be inspiration for you and your future projects. I've got lots of lovely fabrics to show you as well. So lots of nice things to see. Everything is available to buy on my website as well. I'll put the link to that in the, profit, in the description to this video. If you've got a question that you'd like me to answer another time, then feel free to leave a comment on this video and I'll add it to my list for a future week but thanks for watching I'm going to switch over to the live recording now I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you soon hi everyone good evening welcome to this week's Q&A live Q&A about all your sewing and dressmaking needs got lots of lovely fabrics to show you tonight so we'll just wait until everybody joins along hello thanks for joining everyone it's nice to see you hi 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 Hope you've all had a lovely Monday and you're ready for some nice light-hearted sewing, dressmaking, fabric chat. Got lots of nice things to show you. I'm sure you'll be inspired. And I've had quite a lot of questions this week and also quite a lot of people sent questions today as well. And I'm really sorry I don't have everybody's question on my list because it was all getting like too many questions. So if you if I don't answer your question tonight, I'm sorry, it's on my list for next week. Um, but there's only like so much I have to sort of have a time where I like write all my questions down and sort of research them and kind of check that I know what the answers are. Um, so, so yeah, I'm sorry if I don't get around to your question tonight. I will add it onto my list for next week. Feel free to ask me if uh, if you, as I'm chatting tonight, you can ask me any other questions as well and I'll try and keep up with them. Sometimes they're sort of in context with what I'm saying, so it's kind of easy for me to answer them. But if it is something more specific, it might be that I have to just add it to my list for another time because um, I don't I don't always know the answers off the top of my head. So, um, yeah, so quite a few people are managing to watch live which is good. Never had a chance to do the live in real time due to time zones, but because it's national holiday, I get a chance to watch it. Well, welcome and thanks for watching live. Feel free to ask me anything live that you want to. Um, so yeah, it's really nice to see you all. Thanks for joining everyone. So I do have some new fabrics to show you tonight. Um, I don't have loads. I'm waiting for another delivery to come, which seems to somehow be like stuck in some kind of customs somewhere. I was hoping it would have been here by now, but maybe tomorrow. Um, so there should be more more new things to show you next week but i do have a few things to show you anyway and a few things that are also back in stock as well so i'll show you them and then i will get on to answering your questions that you've sent in beforehand we've got international viewers here somebody's from melbourne good morning to you looking forward to seeing the new fabrics i know there are there are lots hi from the desert in arizona and northumberland a little bit closer to home hello show do i stop thread knotting up in a bunch when i begin sewing and what's fiber mood fiber mood's a sewing pattern company and um, that are based in the netherlands but they sell lots of pdf patterns they do magazines so yeah it's just like a brand of sewing patterns and um, in terms of stopping the thread knotting up when you begin sewing is that hand sewing or on a machine um very cold north oxfordshire i know it's really cold tonight although hilariously i was making this reel just before i started the live and uh, you'll see it when i post it later in the week i had quite a lot of layers on and i was roasting absolutely roasting so i actually feel quite hot just now despite it being pretty cold outside um okay so i'm going to show you the new fabrics first of all got some viscose prints which are very beautiful the first few are a couple of the fabric godmother ones so this one here is the Swooning Hearts and it's an Echo Vero crepe fabric. Um, it's viscose and it's got that sort of crepe texture to it. So it's got a really lovely drape, but it's nice and nice and weighty and thick, like not see-through at all. It's a black background and then it's got this really love, lovely heart design on it. So that would be really good for, very versatile because it's, it's, it's a bit more weighty, but it's still quite swishy and drapey. So, so yeah, a good one for 
dresses that you can layer up with tights and a cardigan or tops and blouses and that sort of thing so so yeah that is this these are online these ones as well so this is the swooning hearts one it's 2020 in the cert and then the next one is also another fabric godmother one it's a viscose as well but it's a slightly different weave it's got it's like a jacquard weave so it's got a bit more of a texture to it this one and um, that it is called uh, a more floral viscose jacquard fabric and it's 100% viscose as well, it's 16.50 a metre and it's got, I don't know how good the camera will pick this up but it's kind of like almost a bit like a dobe spot but this, but it's sort of woven in, you can see it catching the light just in those lighter parts of the print um, a beautiful sort of purpley colour with a red, really lovely like all over print um, I wouldn't really say that this is necessarily directional either, quite small scale and you don't need to worry about matching it or anything. Um, it's gorgeous, really nice, feels soft, it's definitely thinner and lighter weight so I think maybe depending on what you were making you might want to line it if it was a dress, if it was a dress that had was quite full or like had lots of gathers I think you would be fine but if it was a bit of a straighter dress I don't know you'd maybe want to line it. Um, so that is that one and then the last viscose one that I've got to show you and then I think that might be all the new ones that I had picked out. I've got a few things that are back in stock that I'll show you as well. This is like a, a non-branded non um, viscose, not linked to a specific designer, but it's still still beautiful. I absolutely love the colours in this. It's got very sort of painterly watercolour feel to it. Um, I think it's this like this way up here. Um, it's gorgeous. Really, really nice. I love all the tones and shades in that. Very, very soft, very sort of floaty, would look gorgeous in something kind of swishy. Tops, tops, blouses, dresses, even like a nice wrap skirt or something would be nice in that as well. It's a beautiful one, really nice. So that is watercolour floral spray viscose fabric and it is just 10, 80 a metre. Um, so that is the new ones that I had picked out back in stock. Actually, I'm just going to put that one on the floor so it doesn't fall down. Back in stock are a few of our popular cosy colours. So I brought this one over because um, it's more of a sort of specific colour. This is the emerald one, but we, we do also have it back in stock in black now as well. Um, this is like this classic sweatshirting fabric. So it's got a little sort of fleck in it. Nice, soft, fleecy back. It's not too thick. I would say it's more of a sort of medium to lighter weight sweatshirting fabric, but it's really nice, really versatile. Wash and wears beautifully so any of your classic jumper sweater patterns cardigan patterns they're all really good for that and um, and that's that's one of their newer shades as well we have been selling the cozy colors for years people just love it and um, but the emeralds is one of their newer colors there so that's nice to have that back in stock as well also back in stock a nice chunkier one is this one here which we've got in three colorways we've got black and navy and then this one is the deep peacock blue chunky knit fabric it's 2160 a meter and it's 80 cotton 20 polyester doesn't have any um like elastane fibers in it but just due to the weave of the fabric it does does have like a bit of a stretch or a bit of a sort of give but not much recovery so you wouldn't be wanting to make anything that was too tight fitting with this sweater sort of jumper wise i would say the toaster version too would be good for this one um or it might be nice actually with like a contrasting ribbing. I guess you could just use like the cu the cuffing for more like an, uh, a sort of looser fit jumper, um, like the like the linden. Um, so so yeah, really good for all of those sorts of things and quite cool that it's got that sort of chunky knit texture to it. Um, I would probably say if you've got an overlocker, it's going to be good to be finishing the edges of this one. I suspect that it probably would fray a little bit. The edges would kind of come away. So so yeah, I would say an, if, you, if you've got an overlocker, that's going to be your best bet. Overlock the edges before you pre-wash as well on that one. So yeah, three colours, navy, that peacock one and then the black they're all back in stock as well so i'm just going to catch up with a few questions that have been sent in while i was chatting there and then i'll get on to the ones that were sent in beforehand so let's see where i got up to i'm a bit obsessed with the second fabric godmother fabric i know it's beautiful do you have any coating weight fabrics with good drapes suitable for the ellie and mac duchess coat it has a full circle bottom we do have one actually that i think might be nice for that i'd actually pulled this out for 
uh, in answer to another question. This is the cloud grey wool fabric and I think it's not too thick. Um, so I, I think it might be nice. I'll open it out a little bit more so you can sort of, you can kind of see the see the drape of that one. I think it's, you know, it's it's not like swishy, but it is wool, so you're not going to get too much, too much swish with a sort of coating type wool. But yeah, um, I've not, I, I can't really picture that fabric. I'm just sort of going off what how you've described it. So hopefully that that makes sense. Um, okay, when quilting some fabric, e.g., a jacket, do you quilt after you have cut the pattern pieces out or before? You can do it either. So I've made the Megan Nielsen Hovea and I've quilted the fabric for that. And in the instructions to that pattern, it tells you to cut it out and then quilt it. But when I did it, I did it the other way around. So I just worked out how much fabric I needed based on the size that I was making of the pattern. So I could just quilt the minimum amount of fabric possible. And then I quilted it and then cut it out. So by the time I had all my pieces, it was already quilted. So, so yeah, you could do it either way. Um, roll on spring and summer sewing i know i'm here for that the watercolor one is beautiful it definitely is lots of people liking the watercolor one and um, which cuffing would go with the emerald that is on my question list it's coming up and um, so i'll show you some options for that shortly um wearing a south bank sweater dress in cozy colors now so comfy that does sound really comfy how would you cut and sew the chunky knit you would just cut and sew it as you normally would and um, it might be that i haven't actually admittedly i haven't actually sewn with it yet but i suspect probably if you had a walking foot that would help you and um, and if you didn't have a walking foot you're probably going to have to do a bit more manual work at like helping to feed it into the machine nice and evenly but otherwise just cut it cut it with regular good you know dressmaking shears um and and jet overlock the edges the raw edges hello if you were making the toaster a grain line one would you make it all on the overlocker or do you sew first on the machine? It depends really, it depends on the type of fabric and the part of the construction as well. So I personally like to, if I say I was making the linden and I was using like a cuffing or a ribbing, I, I probably would overlock everything just for ease, but then it might be when I come to the neckline, I would machine it first and then overlock it afterwards, just because I feel like I would have like a little bit more control, but that's quite a personal preference thing. People do just overlock straight on the neckline, straight on the overlocker. So I think it depends what you feel most comfortable with. If you would be, if you would sort of feel a bit better machining it first and overlocking it afterwards, you could definitely do that until maybe you got your confidence up a little bit more just going for it on the overlocker and um, new liberty tan lawn fabric yeah we do have new ones of that i showed them last week so i didn't bring them over now but i'm going to be filming a new fabrics video either tomorrow or wednesday i'm hoping more new fabrics come because i was hoping they'd be here by now and um, so yeah by the end of the week i'll have a new fabrics video out on youtube and that will have the new liberties in it do you think the Geneva blouse pattern would be okay for the watercolour viscose? I'm presuming that Geneva blouse pattern one is the Liesl & Co one. And yes, I think it would be. Um, one of the samples that they have got of that, the Liesl & Co samples, is out of a, an Atelier Brunette viscose twill. Um, and it looks really nice. I think it works. So so yeah, I think it, the, the watercolour one would be fine for that. Um, what pattern is your top? I love it. This one is the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Gable Top. And I've used it, I've made it in a French terry, a stripy French terry. Um, would the grey wool be good for the sew over at Joan dress or other colours? I think we don't have any other colours of this particular one. I think if you were going to make the Joan dress out of this fabric, you would want to line it. Um, it would be quite structured, but that you know you might want that. That might sort of be the style you're after anyway. What pattern is your top? Hopefully you caught my answer before. Um, okay, so I'm going to get on to the questions that were sent in beforehand now and fly through them and I'll keep an eye on any others that are coming in as well. Okay, so the first one was, I watched your video on using Prim Love Snap tool. I find the jersey snaps with the metal tops are great. If I use the plastic snaps, they're really difficult to undo and they can sometimes snag the fabric even if I use interfacing on the placket. Have you experienced this? So this is in reference to these little snaps here. So these are the metal ones. 
and they have almost like little sort of sharp teeth all the way around that like really grip the fabric and whereas these ones here the plastic ones they just have like one spoke that kind of pokes through the fabric so these definitely have better grip onto the fabric which which means that they're just going to like hold on to it or sort of be secured to the fabric a bit better um, because they've you know they've got more little spokes sticking out of them and um, I haven't experienced them like particularly hard and um, I think sometimes what what I think can sometimes happen when you're using these for the first time is that basically the way that they sort of get attached onto the fabric I always use the prim vario pliers to apply them is that if you don't squeeze it hard enough the little spoke that goes through the fabric doesn't get squished enough it doesn't go flat enough and then it can be quite hard to pop them closed and um, so make sure you're like squishing them hard enough but yeah I, I mean maybe the first few times they're a little bit stiffer but it should sort of get easier over time and you definitely do need interfacing if you're using these a hole will just form in the fabric if you don't put interfacing on and you're using these ones I would say I would put interfacing in for any sort of snaps or poppers that you put in um okay the next one was so this was this was a comment on the youtube recording of last week's video when we were talking about inserting an invisible zip but with a regular zipper foot so somebody said that the the kenneth d king method using a regular zipper foot is absolutely great his video is clear and concise and gets to the point with no flapping laughing a huge plus in my book i'd never use any other method now so yeah if you are wanting to try putting an invisible zip in with a regular zip foot then you could check out the kenneth d king method i've never seen it myself but it, it's it's recommended here okay the next one was although i love the look of the hovea i already have the nova pattern that is a paper cut one that is for a coat that is lined and I have made it in a coating, but I'd like to make the shorter version in a lighter colour slash weight of fabric, possibly the quilted cotton gauze. I'm guessing I need to bind the edges if I use this fabric. So this is, I'm, I'm presuming that this is in reference to this quilted double gauze fabric that we've got here. It comes in a few colourways. This particular one is the redwood and it's 2630 a metre. So it's 70% cotton and 30 polyester because the wadding inside is polyester and it's double sided. It's not like both sides are the same basically. Now it's not that thick and heavy. So you could definitely just create the Nova, the paper cut patterns, Nova coat. I'm pretty sure it's got a facing on the inside. You would still just do that in the same fabric. I don't think you need to bind the edges. It's not too thick to be able to do that and just sort of construct it in the same way. And yeah, it's gonna give you like a different sort of version and kind of lighter weight um, style of that garment. I think it would be nice. You'd obviously still need to line it. Um, you can maybe pick like a nice pattern viscose or something to line the body and then a slippery one for the sleeves. I think that would look really nice. Um, I think someone else actually might have also asked if we've got any binding that matches this i don't think annoyingly i don't think it does i'm going to try and get a hold of the supplier and see if they have any of just the, the double gauze like the plain double gauze then you could make your own binding um, but otherwise i think you're looking at like a contrast situation or if you were making the hovea you could just do the collar version and then there's no external binding to be done because the pocket has a facing and then it's got the collar version you'd obviously just need to do something with the seam allowances inside but a contrast binding might be nice in that context okay so the next question was how does the stretch cone mill compare to your classic blue 11 ounce stretch denim i've bought both from you and made a pair of ginger jeans in classic blue several years ago and about to cut into the cone denim should i cut the same size so my first suggestion would be if it was several years ago please don't take this the wrong way but just ch double check your measurements again i say that only because i've made quite a lot of pairs of jeans over the years and um i just had like my jeans pattern and my size that i made lots of before and then I'd, I, I then I came to make another pair of jeans and then I was like oh I'm actually like a little bit bigger than I used to be only by like like maybe an inch or something it wasn't that much but when you're making like a skinny pair of fitted jeans then sometimes that matters and um, I would say that in, in terms of comparison those two fabrics unfortunately we don't have any of the stretch cone denim left we only have the non-stretch one the stretch one was part of a kit um a few years ago 
I would say that the stretch of that is less than the 11 ounce one. So it, depending on how much basting and fitting that you did on your other pair, like if you ended up taking the seam allowance in quite a bit, then you'd probably be fine. But if you but if you didn't, if you just kind of had the regular seam allowance, then I would say you might want to size up a little bit and then baste fit them to check. And it might be you take them in a little bit, but it doesn't have quite as much stretch. Um, Okay, the next one was, I'm thinking of a billy dress with the emerald cosy colours. What ribbon cuffing would you recommend either to match or contrast? I wondered about red, but I'm worried to look like a Christmas tree. I feel like it might be quite festive if you had red. So unfortunately, the cosy colours doesn't range of fabric. I don't really know why, but it doesn't come with, like there's not a matching set of ribbing or cuffing available with it. So I've tried to look at the ones we've got to get the best match really. And the this is the this is the kind of like foresty green one. I mean it doesn't match, but it could possibly sort of tone and go together. It depends whether you sort of you would be up for that or not, them being slightly different. Otherwise I I I would suggest that you just use the main fabric for the cuffing and the neck band and the hem band. The fabric's got enough stretch to do that. You would be able to do that and it would be fine. It would still look good. So that's your I, I would say that's your best bet. That's the the sort of sorry I don't know the, the name of the colour but it's a bit like a forest green. Annoyingly we just put codes in the back, we don't put the name. So but it's but we only have one that's kind of dark green like that. Um or else just use the same the same fabric. Okay, the next question was, can you show the Merchant and Mills ED please? So this is, this is it here. It's a Merchant and Mills ED top um, and it's got quite, quite full sleeves. So they, they sort of balloon out quite a lot and then it's like a little drawstring at the bottom. We made this for the window display. So it's not actually my top, it's not been made to fit me. I think it might, I think I would have probably sized down if I was making it. It is quite loose because it doesn't have any bust starts or anything. This version's also fairly sort of short. So I don't know if you were wearing it open over high waisted jeans, you'd probably be fine. But if you like sort of tucking stuff like that in or having it a bit longer, I don't know, maybe you'd want to lengthen it. Um, so it's made in a double gauze. So there was somebody who was asking about patterns for a double gauze. Here's an example of one. I think it's nice. It's got a cute little neck hole opening at the back as well. And it's just got a bound neckline. So hopefully that is what you wanted to see on it in the sleeve shape. Um, okay, the next one was just wondering if you could explain how fold over elastic works or is used on knickers. I've not used it yet and I didn't want to buy it till I understood it. So we do quite a lot of different types of fold over elastic here. So this one is one that's got like a little sort of fancy kind of scalloped edge. So it's going to be going round like the top of your knickers and your um, leg openings as well. And I would say the way that you, one way that you could put it on, I mean, it would probably tell you in the instructions how to do it, is that, so one side's kind of like the outer side because it sort of looks a bit fancier and it's got a little kind of decorative thing on it is that you could put your, say this was your bit of fabric. So you could put it on like that. So you've got your fabric onto like the backing bit and then you could zigzag that together um, so that it stretches. Um, or if you were using Mariflex there, you could just sew it on and then you could flip it over. So you know it's definitely gonna be caught and then you could just do a nice line of top stitching along the bottom there. Um, either in a zigzag stitch or if you're using Mariflex thread, you could use a straight stitch um, or, or yeah, stretch stitch, zigzag. Or if you're feeling a bit more confident rather than doing the zigzag first, you could just get your bit of fabric and just like fold it over and sort of catch the edge like that and then um, stitch it. Um, so hopefully that that makes sense. It's not it's not as hard as you, what you think it is. Quite easy. Okay, the next one was I have a big stash of lovely cotton fabrics that are roughly one meter each. Some maybe slightly bigger. Any suggestion on what tops I could make with them? It will really depend on what size of top you're making and the width of them and whether you can get your bodice pieces side by side. This might also depend on whether the fabric's directional or not, because you could probably get, you probably have more options if you could have like one bodice one way and the other bodice the other way on it, on the, the fabric like that, or sort of, you know, fold it in. So you've got folds opposite ends there. And um, the grain line willow top, it doesn't really use that much fabric if you can, if you can get your bodices side by side. 
um, the Ogden Kami might be another nice one. Um, so, so yeah, I think it depends on the width of them, really. But there's a, cu a couple of suggestions there. Okay, the next one was... Um, how do you find the straight grain if cutting scraps or repurposing something? So, if you've kind of lost the selvage on your bit of fabric and you're thinking, I want to cut something out in the straight grain, but I don't really, um, I don't really know where the grain is on that, then you can look really closely at the texture of it. I wonder if I can find an example here. Um, you know, say it was like on something like this gauze, I guess you can, you, the way it sort of crinkles gives you an idea of the direction of the fibres that are there. But yeah, if you just look really closely at it, you should be able to see the, 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 the weave of the fabric and, you know, how, how it's been sort of woven together. You can also put strain on it as well. So if you, if it, say it's a woven fabric, doesn't have any stretch, then you'll know that you're on grain if it doesn't if it doesn't sort of give or stretch you'll know that if it's sort of squinty if you stretch if you sort of pull on it and it stretches and gives then you'll know that you're pulling it in the bias so you yeah you can sort of flatten it out and kind of pull on it and tug on it and try and work out the like the direction or orientation of the fibers and um, so good, good daylight for that if you're trying to look for the 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 direction of the threads the grain of the fabric okay we've got a suggestion here i can usually squeeze a fiber mid norma out of a meter that's good to know i guess if it, top, tops where you've got binding for the neckline is quite good because you can just use a different type of binding you don't need the same one as the as the actual fabric that's going to save on your fabric as well things with with sort of short sleeves are really going to fit into Okay, right, the next question was how to overlock tiny wrist and arm holes on baby clothes. Ah, tricky. Now, I would say if you are finding this really hard to get into and really fiddly, it might be that you need to try and, I suppose on the arm holes, it's a little bit trickier, but for the wrists, I think it might be easier to, to hem them before you do the seam. And then you'll just have like your overlocker thread chain sticking out. If you just make sure that that's quite long and get a wool needle or a blunt needle and sort of thread that back into the seam allowance to sort of finish it off. So that by the time you sew that seam, you've already hemmed it or you've like already attached your cuff or whatever. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I guess you, you just have to go really slow and you have to keep stopping. So you just like sew a little bit, try and reposition it and just kind of go all the way around. Or it might be you, that you find it easier to sew on the machine first so the bits of fabric are actually together. Because um, it's just maybe maybe that's a bit easier to do that. So by the time you're sewing it on the overlocker, it's, you know, you're not having to hold the bits of fabric together as well as you sew it. You're just can kind of concentrate on sewing it more. Um, Okay, the next one was tips for sewing up the chunky knitted fabric. I'm scared I will stretch it out of the seam. So that was the one that I showed earlier, this sort of chunky knitted one here. So as I was saying before, I think if you've got a walking foot, that would really help. But otherwise, you just need to make sure that the fabric stays really relaxed as you're sewing it and that you're, you know, it's not, that, that it's not getting sort of inadvertently stretched as you sew it. But I think, you know, you'd be surprised actually quite easy I think I don't think it would really stretch out that much you just try and try and sew as relaxed and um, gently as possible okay the next one was I sew a lot with jersey and sweatshirting fabrics and I've ended up with a big basket of scraps any ideas for projects to use up excess fabric so if it's if it's jersey like a t-shirt jersey then knickers is a good one um or kids clothes kids toys if you've got children that you in your life somewhere that you can sew so for and um, there is also somebody might know who's watching this the name of it because i can't i can't remember it now but i have definitely seen sewing patterns where and it's a jumper and it's got like lots of different panels in it um that sort of makes it up i mean it's quite eclectic looking but really good way to use up scraps Sorry, I didn't get a chance to find out what the, the jumper was actually called. I have seen it, I just can't remember the name, but maybe somebody watching will know that. Um, any other suggestions of what you do with your sweatshirting scraps, then let, let me know. Um, will the chunky knit work for the True Bias Marlowe cardigan? Yeah, I think it would. 
um, depending on what you, machine you've got, I don't know, you potentially might find the buttonholes a little bit tricky on that. So alternatively, you could just have press studs instead. You could just sew buttons on, but then have the hand sewn press studs underneath. Somebody's suggesting headbands. That's a good idea for the for the jersey. Neck warmers. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that's a good idea. We did a neck warmer for the window once. It was just just like a really simple kind of rectangle thing that you could put over, and then it would match your jumper. It's a good idea. Um, okay, so the next one was, actually there was a couple of quests, two that were sort of similar here. Where am I? Okay, how to tell what type of jersey fabrics would work for the Juno PJ. So that's a P jersey PJ pattern that is in the Tilly and the Buttons uh, Make It Simple book, I think, or a stretch book. And then somebody else also asked, for fabric for that pattern, not too tricky for someone new to jersey. So you could you could use quite a few different types of jersey for this depending on your le sewing ability levels, confidence levels, and also what sort of look you wanna go for. So I would say probably the easiest one to work with is gonna be a, a loop back or a French terry. So this is an example of this here. So this is one where the reverse of the fabric, let me try and find, there's a sort of loose bit on this bolt for some reason. Um, the back of the fabric's got like lots of little sort of loops, so it makes it feel a little bit thicker, um, but it still feels really nice. It'll, just, it'll, it'll make the pajamas feel a little bit thicker and sort of heavier, but would still look really lovely. Um, so, so yeah, a French terry, cotton French terry, or look back is one option. And then the other option would just be like a regular jersey fabric, which is sometimes gets called a single single knit jersey. This is one here. We sell lots of ones, planes, patterns. We've got quite a few of this sort of stripy one in different colours as well. This one is the dashed lines on purple and it's 14 10 a meter. So this would give a li li sort of lighter weight version but it would still you know it would still be really nice it would still work work well and then the other one that you could do which is a little bit trickier so if you're new to jersey i wouldn't suggest this fabric straight away because it's a bit more floppy but it would make a really lovely luxurious pair of pajamas it is our tensile jersey and you can see it's much lighter weight it's much more floppy and um, but you can it's nice and stretchy so you can make pajamas with this as well we make lots of things with it and um, pajamas just being one of them but yeah it's just because it is a bit slippier it's just a little bit more tricky to work with so three different options there depending on sort of how thick and heavy you want your pajamas to be okay the next one was i'm thinking of an overlocker but i'm not sure where to start i think you should um try and work out sort of roughly how much you want to spend um because you can get over lockers that are a bit more basic but then sometimes they can be a little bit trickier to sort of thread or if you can stretch your budget a bit more you can get over lockers that have an air threader so they're a little bit easier to thread but they do cost a lot more money and um, the over locker that i use at home is a genomi one it's the 6432 xl I'm pretty happy with it. It's not an ear threader one, um, but it but it works. It does everything that I want it to. It's the ones we use in the workshop as well. I don't really have experience of using many others. Um, my mum has one of the ear threader ones that I got and it's pretty fancy um, and I like it, but you know, they are more expensive. Um, okay, the next one was, I bought some Liberty Silk in their outlet sale. Congratulations, that sounds amazing. Any tips for sewing it? Do I pre-wash it? I would, I, I, you could pre-wash it. I'd probably hand wash it if you're going to pre-wash it in like a really mild like liquid detergent that is for delicates. Um, I, so I would probably I would probably do that if you want to pre-wash it. In terms of sewing with it, I would use a Microtex needle. Um, maybe get a couple of packs. Try and use either a 60 or a 70. It depends what you're sewing. Try and use a 60 if you can, but if you start having to sew through quite a few layers, the 60 might not cut it. It's really going to minimise any snagging on that. Um, make sure that you've got really fine, sharp pins as well. Um, we do have really fine pins. I'm not actually sure if they're in stock or not because we've had like a really weird pin shortage with our supplier for months and months now. I don't know what's going on. Um, but Merchant and Mills do fancy pins for fine fabric, so you might be able to get some there as well. The other thing that you could do is if you're sort of finding it hard to sew the seam or the fabric's kind of buckling and, and getting kind of stuck in the machine, is you can also sew 
um, if you just use like really fine tissue paper, like when we send out fabrics, when you order fabric online, we wrap it up in tissue. You can use like that sort of tissue paper as well. When you're sewing the seam and it helps to sort of stabilize the fabric and then you can just, becomes like a perforated bit, you can just tear it off afterwards. So you can, um, you can do that as well. Um, and just take your time with it. I mean, it's gonna slip around like anything, but it'll be worth it once you've made something and it's just, just gonna be such a beautiful fabric. Um, Okay, the next one was, I'm sewing buttonholes on my Agnes PJs and the one step buttonhole foot in my Janome gets stuck on the pocket. Any tips? So this is, I've got some of the Agnes PJs here actually. So this is um, sewing the buttonhole here. So presumably it's getting sort of stuck, or stuck where the button's a little bit thicker. So I think what you need to do is just be anticipating it getting stuck and you need to just give the machine a little bit of a helping hand if you start sewing a one-step buttonhole foot and your your hands aren't really doing anything at all and you're just letting the fabric like move along, it can get and you're going quite fast. It can sometimes it can just get stuck and then it'll start stitching in the spot. And as soon as it starts doing that, the thread will really build up and then it's kind of game over because once the thread starts building up underneath, the whole thing gets stuck and it can't move. So it might be that once once it's sort of getting towards that pocket bit, you just need to give it like a little bit of a shove and get it over it over it a bit more um, so that it can go around. Sometimes I have to do that on my machine as well. I sort of, sort of know the sequence of how it goes around the buttonhole and I can tell if it's sort of starting to stutter and it might just need to be you, get, you give the fabric a little bit of an extra nudge or a shove or a, or a push to keep it moving. Um, so so yeah try, try that see if that can help um okay the next one was will you be stocking the accru slash cream color for the cozy colors fabric so i was having a little think about this because we have got this colorway of the cozy colors and it's actually called light gray and i have got a feeling that it used to be called accru but every time we get a batch of this fabric in, it seems to slightly change its color a little bit. And at the moment, it actually looks quite quite warm and like a little bit pinky, but it's called light gray. I would say it's definitely got a crew vibes, but because the fabric is a little bit marled and there's like a few different tones and colors in there, it's kind of one of those ones that's like quite open to color interpretation, depending on what light you're in, what screen you're looking at it on, what the way the photograph's been taken, all of those things. So I would say this is this is probably the closest we've got to a crew. I don't think they do another one that is lighter than this, but I will I will try and check. But yeah, at the moment this this is called light grey. It is kind of like a little bit of crew. Um, okay, the next one is I buy pattern. I buy patterns fabric requirement meterage, but I always end up with a lot left over. So this can vary quite a lot on pattern company as well, because I suspect what they'll do is they'll work out what the fabric requirements are for the different sizes that are in their pattern. And then they'll add a bit on to allow for shrinkage because some fabrics can obviously shrink and then you don't want to end up have like being told one amount of fabric and then it shrinks, you don't have enough. Um, and then it might be that they just like add a little bit extra on as well for good measure because nobody, no pattern company is gonna want to be in the position where they give a fabric requirement amount and then there's a risk that it's too short because that's just gonna be like immensely annoying for people using the pattern who then don't have enough fabric. But obviously it can also be annoying if you've then got too much as well. So what I would suggest that you do if you are, are you know, maybe you're making a pattern that you've made before, you know what size you're gonna make, is that before you purchase your fabric, you just measure out the width of the fabric that you're thinking about buying. You can just measure it out like on your table or your floor at home and um, the way that you would sort of cut it out, and lay your pattern pieces out, because it will also depend on whether the fabric is directional or not. And, um, and maybe like if it's got stretch or something as well. So, so yeah, it, you know, it can vary what the one thing I would be cautious of because I know this has happened before um is that if say if you're if you've got a pattern for a stretchy garment and you you've got your pattern pieces for the size you're making you sort of measure out precisely how much you need do remember to add on shrinkage because jersey fabric does shrink so so I would be adding on probably like 10 percent just to make sure um but you still you know you won't be left with like loads and loads after that it should should just cover you so yeah 
I think you just need to maybe get like a little bit more confident about knowing how you can squeeze things in. Okay, the next one was where to add the label in the closet core LED dress. So I would suggest on, this is the LED dress here, it's got a facing at the back. I would suggest probably like tucking it underneath the center back there and then just stitching it on. So you've got like your little me made bit sticking out here. The other thing that you could do is just sort of sew it directly on top here as well. So you could um, open it up, stitch it along the bottom fold line and then flip it back up again. And then you could do like a, a tight zigzag stitch along the top to hold it on. So then it looks a little bit more like a patch rather than sticking down. So a few options there for sewing on a label. Um, the next one was, do fibre mood patterns include seam allowance? It depends what format you get them in. So with the magazines where you have to trace the patterns, I believe they do not include seam allowance. But if you buy a PDF pattern from the fibre mood patterns website, the PDF files that you get include options with and without the seam allowance. So in that case, they do come with seam allowance. But in the magazines, I believe they don't. Um, and then the next one was how often do you change the needles on your overlocker? I would say probably not, maybe not as much as I should, usually just when there's a problem. Um, so, so yeah, just maybe when the stitching's a bit weird or it's like, yeah, making a funny noise or something. Um, I don't really have a specific time range for you. But yeah, I think it's going to vary. It's going to depend on how often you use your overlocker. Okay, before I get on to the last section of questions, um, which was more about fabric and pattern recommendations, I'll just see if there's been any others here that I can answer. In general, does having the grain line at 90 degrees to the selvage mean you need less fabric? Not necessarily. Please also show Ruby Serona viscose linen and dress suggestions, please. I'm Saron, I might be able to show that if it's close to me actually. Um, let's see, I think this might be it here. Um, Ruby Serona Viscose Linen, yeah, this is it here. This is the Ruby one, this is a nice red colour. It's not see-through at all, so it's going to be really versatile. You could make the hinterland dress with it, and um, you could make um, a, you could make a wrap dress, the Elodie would be nice to, to come to mind. Um, yeah, a few options there, so it's a really nice fabric. It's also got a little bit of stretch in it as well, or a bit of give, which makes it nice and comfy to wear. Um, Helen from Helen's Closet suggests flattening seams with a hammer to help stop the buttonhole thingy from sticking on the seams. It works well on jeans. Yeah, definitely worth a try. Make sure that that pocket is definitely pressed and squished nice and flat. Um, can you show the dams and rami, please? What dress would I make with it? Dams and Rami, I don't know if I have got that nearby at the moment, so I might have to add that to my list for next week. If you send me a direct message with that, I'll flag it for my list for next week. When I wanted new machines slash overlockers, I went to a show like the knitting and stitching show where I could try a lot of different machines in one place. That's a really good idea. Um, I think probably there's usually a show in February. I think there's a stitch festival in February at the Islington Design Centre. Um, there's, usually, there's usually one there. There's maybe some, or, or yeah, I think that's the next one. The Alexandra Palace one's not till October, does it? The Sakita sweatshirt by Hey June or the Gemma sweater by Named Clothing could work for sweatshirt scraps. Okay, lovely, thank you. Someone else is suggesting hats and gloves for the, the jersey and sweatshirting scraps. Okay, when overlocking a single layer of viscose, my machine had started gathering the fabric. I've re-threaded, but still have the problem. Any advice, please? Yeah, there's it's probably some, maybe something to do with the differential feed. I'm not an expert on that. I would probably be doing a bit of trial and error myself there. But yeah, I think maybe you need to try and mess about with the settings a little bit more. I'm sorry, I can't be more specific than that. Um, if anybody has sewn a single layer of viscose and found the same thing and managed to work out a solution, let me know. It's in March this year at the Business Design Centre. Okay, thank you. Um, sewing for Pleasure is in March at the NEC. Yeah, both of them should have sewing machine places at them where you can test out different things. Okay, the next one was, I'm after a bit of advice for fabric and a pattern, I'm new to sewing, I've made the CV by the Tilling the Buttons. 
I'm looking for an easy pattern, not too fussy, as in a pull-on dress with a loose fit, easy to wear, and a fabric that is comfy, warm, and soft to the touch, as I'm having major sensory issues and the clothes I buy just aren't right for me. If you can help in any way, I'd be super grateful. So for something that is just like a, a like a looser sort of pull-on thing, I bought a few different options over. A few more Tilly and the Buttons ones. If you've made them, then they're going to be good because the instructions are good. Both of these are are quite quite loose and just easy to pull on. They don't have any sort of fancy fastenings or anything. So quite simple to make. Um, and then Merchant and Mills generally have sort of like looser fit pull on styles. So that might also be a good range to look at. There's the Camber set, which is just like a really simple sort of shift dress that's quite straight. Um, and that one's the shirt dress, which has got like a little, so probably a bit more complicated. This one's got like a sort of bib section there. Now, in terms of fabric that feels soft and warm to the touch, a few options that I brought over were, um, now where did it go? I did bring over a flannel. Where's it gone? Um, this one here. So this is 100% cotton and it's like a brushed flannel. So it does feel nice and soft. Um, and it's a little bit thicker and heavier, so it'll probably feel warmer as well. But it does just have a bit more structure, so it depends if you, you know, if you sort of want that or not. Um, the other option that might be nice as well is cotton gauze. It feels sort of quite quite light, um, but it does have two layers of fabric, so you know it can sort of trap the air in. Um, you, you know, it's not not like too thick and heavy, but. For dresses like that, I don't think you can have anything that's too sort of thick and uh, th thick and heavy. You know, that's that's warmer. Um, the other option would be as if you used a jersey fabric. I think that's going to feel really nice and soft. And I didn't have the pattern envelope to show you, but the closet core ebony is a really nice pull on jersey dress that's quite loose, and it it, it would feel beautiful in something like a tencel. I would say look for things that are natural that have got tencels good, bamboos good. They are all like wicking fabrics, so um especially the tencel and the and the bamboo, so they're gonna they're gonna feel really nice on your skin. So. Hopefully that helps give you a few pointers to try. Um, okay, the next one was fabulous fabric for a winter Marnie top. That's the Tilly and the Buttons one. Um, I think this one would be really nice. It's a viscose twill, so it feels a little bit of a sort of heavier, heavier weight, but it's still got nice and drape and it's nice and drapey and it's going to be nice in that style of the, of the Marnie um, top. So it's got really nice colour colours in it and it's like a sort of black, black darker background so I think that would be really nice it is the autumnal garden viscose twill and it's 13 20 a meter um somebody else was also asking for something that I thought this would be good for as well where did it go I'll maybe come back to it later I can't find that question now um Okay, the next one was, I never know what to do with French terry, anything other than the cocoa, the neckline is too wide for me. Um, so, well, the top I'm wearing right now is in a French terry, it's the Jennifer Lauren handmade gable top, but I don't know if you think the cocoa is quite wide, you might find that this is a bit too wide as well, because um, it has got quite a wide boat neckline on it. Um, other options would be that you can just use French terry to make sweatshirting patterns as well, you're just going to end up with like a lighter weight version of the jumper so um i have got the, the toaster version two and a french terry you could also make a linden or a jara jumper or the the telly and the buttons um belly so so yeah a lot, lots of options there for jumpers and tops um okay the next one was can we please see the eucalyptus terry close-up and pattern recommendations so this this is a french terry so any of the things i just suggested would be good for that and um, this is it here it's got lovely sort of watercolor leaves on it. it's really nice and then the back is that that french terry loop back and then I just preempting another question here. I think the off white cuffing goes really nicely with that. So if you were using it for a jumper pattern that had cuffs or hemband or neckband, then that would be a nice pairing. They are nice and fresh and bright for spring. And then the next one was fabric. Okay, there were two that were sort of similar, so I'll kind of answer these together. I think fabric for the heather blazer, including lining versatile and plain for the outer and then somebody else who wanted colorful midweight fabric ideas for the closet core jazika blazer 
So the Jizika, I would say, is probably a bit more tailored, a bit more fitted, whereas the Heather Blazer, that's a Freddy Pat and Company one, is a bit, bit more of a sort of oversized, looser type blazer, a bit more of a relaxed fit. So I've got a few different wool fabrics to show you here. Um, this one is the two-tone peacock wool fabric. It's 24.50 a meter and it's 100% wool. And the way that it's woven, it's got like two two lots of colour in it. So there's sort of like a blue, brighter blue, and then it kind of looks like a like a dark blue, a navy maybe. Um so yeah, there's that one. And then I that that cloud grey one that I was showing earlier as well, I think it would also be good too. It would go with lots of things. That's a cloud grey wool fabrics, 24.50 a meter. And then a few other options here that are a little bit more colourful. Um, this one here is, where's the tag gone? The Duck Egg Wool Mohair Fabrics, 26.50 a metre. It's got a really subtle check on it as well, which I think is nice. Got a really nice texture, that one. And then this one here, a nice purpley one. This is the Heather Herringbone Wool. It's 24.50 a metre. Um, it's got that lovely classic herringbone texture on it, which is really nice. And then for something like a little bit brighter um, and more colourful is these really cool spotty ones here. Um, so one's magenta with midnight, like a really dark navy. These are 100% wool, they're 24.50 a metre and that one's purple with bright blue spots, they're really cool. Um, and we do have some some like more classic kind of slippery linings that would work really well for that and um, but i had brought over this one which is the silver lining fabric to go with the cloud gray that was in response to something that was a bit of a a, a general color that would go with lots of things so hopefully there's inspiration in there for all your blazer needs and um, okay somebody suggesting the waves and wild is has got a lovely pull-on dress What's the thickest French terry you have, please? They're all kind of the same thickness, really. I wouldn't say there's much difference in the thickness of them. And um, they're all kind of the same. I was reading reviews for the blouse by the avid seamstress being narrow and tight in the sleeves. Did you find you had to adjust yours? Not the sleeves, but I have found that the elastic is a little bit tight and I wish I'd made the elastic looser. So, so just definitely watch out for that. I would say it probably is quite fitted like the style of it it might be might be that you want to consider sizing up take a close look at the at the finished garment measurements the toaster is good in french terry yeah i really like my toaster in that one um any tips for the next kit yeah the next kit will be out a week on wednesday and um, there's a fabric in there that you might be the fiber might be new to you you might not have tried that before and it's maybe good if you're trying a certain type of fabric for the first time and then the other one's like a little bit more involved and had buttons. That's all we'll say for now. Um, okay, the telling the buttons dress would be nice in a soft sweatshirt fabric and would be nice too. Yeah, that's a good idea. The closet core ebony is loose and comfy. Also, low box dress one or two, so easy and cozy. Um, I've been reading reviews for the blouse and having... Um, okay, I think that's the same question again dial down the tension on the overlocker okay good a few more people saying about the shows okay great um do you have to be careful cutting the herringbone for matching the front and backs no i don't think you would i think you just go for it it's running vertically i don't think you would need to match that at all okay the next one was suggestions for the jack trench coat this is a ready to sew pattern and it's got it's got quite a few, it's like, I don't know, how can I describe it? It's got quite a lot of like fullness and gathers and the samples have definitely been made in something that's very sort of floppy and drapey. So it didn't, to me, it didn't really look like your classic, more sort of structured trench coat. So what I think would work best for that is the smooth drape tensile twill. We've got this in quite a few different colours. Um, this is the grass one. It's 100% tensile. It's a twill weave, so it looks, you know, it's, it's got a really nice sort of thickness and weight to it. We use this fabric for the, the Chalk and Notch Joy jacket which I know is not a trench coat, but it, but if you look in the Sewing Society section of the website, you'll see the modelled pictures of that made up in the of this fabric made up in the Joy. It's really nice for a sort of relaxed fit, kind of loose, sort of swishy garment. So I think that would be really, 
that fabric would be really nice for that pattern. Um, okay, the next one was any ideas that could use Liberty prints in small yet visible ways. So I've got a couple of examples of some coats that we made here. These were ones that we did for kits. This is the Frazy Pattern Company Elford and we used it in the under collar there. And then we also used it for binding the seams on the inside and doing the hem at the bottom as well. And then this, this version doesn't have the cuffs um, but you could put it on the on the inside bit of the cuffs as well or on here we just did it here um on the this the sort of turning the raw edge of the hem there and this one this is a closet core kelly anorak it's in the hood which looks quite nice and then i think we also put it along the bottom hemline as well and um, the other place i think you could probably do it is on on a, you'd have to maybe sort of work out a different way to construct the button band but you could maybe do it on the inside of the button band so then if you were wearing the shirt open a little bit you just could see like a little bit of the liberty there as well or you could do it on a collar stand the inner collar stand so yeah just like little little accents where it sort of sticks out every now and again and you see you see a nice liberty print without having like all over liberty print okay the next one is what is the best slim fit jeans and trouser trousers you've made i would say probably the sasha for the trousers they're just like a really sort of nice classic smart trouser i've made quite a lot of versions of them and then in terms of slim fit jeans as opposed to skinny jeans i would probably say the dawn jeans they've got a few different leg style options and i've got more of like a just a sort of straight straight cut kind of slim slimmer cut on them they're not skinny jeans but they're just a bit straighter and slimmer so that's the megan nielsen dawn jeans and um, the next one was patterned fabric for summer trousers i picked out a couple that were that are ones that are actually in the sale at the moment and um, these are both fiscal's 12 fabrics so they'd be good for sort of looser style trousers um at this one actually also has a bit of stretch as well and i thought the colors were a bit brighter and a bit more summery and um, so this is the abstract ripple on powder stretch viscose fabric it's got 30 percent off um, and it's 12 for 12 pounds a meter but then 30 percent off um, and then this one here let me just whoops hitting myself in the head there where is the tag for this one gone Sorry, I can't find the tag for this one, um, but it will be <laughs> it will be in the sales section. It's a bit more of a larger scale print, but I think that would that would still look nice, really cool. It's got really nice colours in it, nice sort of lilac-y powder blue, and then a sort of yellowy one with some beiges. Really nice for nice summer trousers. So a couple of options there in the sale as well, which is a nice bargain. Um, and then fabric recommendations for the Stella joggers to be worn as PJs. I would probably say French Terry would be good for that. Just a little bit lighter, but still a nice sort of bottom weight. Fabrics for the saltwater slip dress, preferably a black background. Um, I thought this one might be quite nice. It's a nice sort of crinkle viscose fabric. And we've got another one that came in at the same sort of time that's more like monochrome. This is the Forget Me Not Viscose Crepe fabric. It's 990 a meter and it's got a nice, a nice dark black background with these little flowers on it. It's a little bit sheer, so I would probably say you'd be wanting to wear that maybe over a little t-shirt or long sleeve top and layer it up with some tights. I think that would be lovely. Um, okay, I'm almost at the end here. Uh, recommendations for a pattern for a wedding guest outfit, plus size, but small bust. Um, the Rose Clear, the Cashmere Rose Clear, which comes in a wide variety of sizes, would be nice as a wrap dress and you can have different tiers of gathering or just like a straight skirt as well. The Elodie is a really nice, nice one. They have the curved size range available as a PDF on their website and then we could print it out for you with our pattern printing service. Um, also, oops, also check out... A few other places that I like to look for sort of different, lot, a range of lots of different dress patterns are the Deer and Doe website. They do a curve size range now as well. So over it and also Fibre Mood too. They've got lots and lots of different styles of dresses. So good places to look for inspiration. Um, okay, I've got three more. Can I fit them in? Um, are you getting any bam more bamboo jersey in? Yes, we should be. Uh, fabric Godmother ones at the start would look great as the Davenport. Yeah, they would be really nice. Um, okay, looking for separate patterns, a top and skirt that could go together to look like a dress for viscose. Um, so I picked out a couple of skirt patterns here. 
which have got like a nice waistband. So then I was thinking you could probably like then tuck something, tuck a top into them. And if it was in the same fabric, it might look a bit like a dress. Um, so, so yeah, a couple of skirt options there. Sorry, I haven't now written down any top ones. I'm trying to think of a top one off the top of my head. Because uh. um, I, th I feel like it would need to be something that's, that's not too oversized. It's gonna, I guess it would kind of blouse over and that might look quite nice. Um, maybe like a longer version of the Closet Core Celio top that you could tuck in. Um, patterns for double gauze. I've got a blog that I did on double gauze, um, not last summer, but the summer before. And it talks loads about sewing with double gauze, working with it and lots of different pattern suggestions as well. You can do lots of different things with it. I've done pajamas before. One of my favorite versions of the Helen, Helen's Closet Gilbert shirt is in a double gauze. It looks nice in that. Um, or just simple tops as well. I've made the, the True Buys Ogden Cami out of gauze, the, cat, the Merchant and Mills Camber, the Tilly and the Button Stevie, loads of things you can do with it. It's a really nice fabric to wear. And then the last one I've got on the list here is suggestions for a midi wrap skirt pattern with inclusive size range. The Closet Core Fior, it goes from a US zero up to a 32. Um, so you can check out that one. On the, the curve size range for that pattern is just as a PDF on the Closet Core website. Whew. Okay, right, we're almost at nine. How is that hour just flown past? I'm gonna see if there's any other questions here. And then I'll just, I'm sorry if I didn't get to answer any of your questions. I'll add it onto my list for next week. Um, okay, I'm making the Shepherd at the moment. I ordered it from you and it came super quick. That's great. Is the oregano textured stretch cotton nearby and would it be good for the avid seamstress city trousers, please? The fabric is 10% stretch and the pattern says a slight stretch. It's not nearby. I think it probably would be okay, but that fabric is really stretchy. I started using it to make the named, is it a Anya, Anya trousers? They've got like a bit of a weird waistband, like an interesting waistband bit at the back. And they ended up being a lot bigger than, than I thought they were gonna be. And I think it's cause it's got a lot of stretch. So you probably need to size down quite a bit if you were, if you were using that to make the city trousers. Um, and it says only 10% stretch. Thank you, have a lovely, okay, thank you for your thanks, everyone. I'll just check that I haven't missed any other questions here. Um, no, I think, I'm, I think I managed to catch all the ones. Sorry if I missed it, can you suggest a bright, smartish fabric to make the Friday Pattern Company Davenport? Yeah, that, 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 that Amore fabric, Godmother one that I showed at the start would be, would be beautiful in a Davenport. Um, that's the Amore floral viscose jacquard. That's the other one that somebody else suggests. So thanks for that. It's a good suggestion. Um, thank you, Lauren. Have a wonderful week. Well, thank you for joining me, everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll put the recording up on YouTube as well at some point tomorrow when my internet finally decides to upload it. Um, so you can watch it back on there as well. If you want me to answer your question next time, then send me a message or you can email us or whatever. Um, and I'll try and make sure I add it onto my list. But yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good week and I'll see you soon. Bye.